Hey guys, this is Daniel and I'm so excited to have you here. I interviewed uh, Catherine Jones, the one and only, on how to start a seven-figure movement, okay? You're going to learn everything that you need about storytelling, about positioning, about basically becoming and creating a brand. And it is so, so amazing that the things that Catherine shared inside, it was so short but also so amazing there was seriously no fluff in there it was like a 30 minutes packed with a ton of value by the end of this training you're going to understand the power of storytelling and the power of a real brand okay of a no-brainer offer something that you know just cannot go unnoticed uh, this is what Catherine did and this is what she shared with me this uh, inside his training and by the way guys This was a live training inside my authority hackers Facebook group If you're not a member yet use the link below to join us because we hold those weekly trainings uh, And I want you to just participate in the next one, you know uh, Also, if you like the video make sure to let me know what know what you think also subscribe if you'd like to get a notification in regards to our other awesome videos as well and that is it. Without a further ado, let's dive in because you're in for a treat, okay? Catherine was seriously amazing. So, Catherine, this is, again, this is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, oh, you're yeah. so fantastic. I've been following you. And I, I can't wait to go dive into marketing and share all of that with them that you now have there. And I'm going to help you extract it. Yes, honestly, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited. It is, it's an honor. I was, just, I was just telling Daniel before this, like, like you're, I, well, first of all, I'm honored that I'm in your dream 100 to be on this show. Um, but Daniel's awesome. And he, you just like comment on my stuff and you're like super engaged. And so, um, so I like, I am equally as excited to meet you because I'm like, I see your stuff all over the place. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this dude seems really cool. So listen, the honor, the honor is actually all mine. Well, that is amazing to pop up in Catherine Jones' feed on Facebook. That That is awesome. And yeah, you put on some really great stuff. I mean, the joint venture webinar that I watched, it was so cool. Uh, case studying, how you met Russell Brunson. Uh, it was such such an amazing time. Basically, I started marketing uh, because I read one of Russell's books. Uh, until this day, uh, Expert Secrets is my favorite book uh, out of all that I read. Is that the one you read first? Uh, extra secrets yes i yeah, wrote uh, I, I read that one. i read dot com secrets first and it's my and that one's my favorite i think it's whatever one you read first it's just like your it's it's your favorite for life <laughs> uh yeah that that is actually a good point i'm actually rereading dot com secrets because there's an updated version you had it about 100 uh, extra pages so i'm rereading it now and, and yeah and, and again Catherine, that is an absolute pleasure and i'm seeing all of those people joining us we're already at 6 that is awesome to have you guys so uh, really depending on how you want to go with this, I'm sure because you're all over the place. I'm seeing everyone is now interviewing you uh, and that is so cool. But I also assume that most people are preparing uh, questions in advance, which I did, but I also came, uh, it came up to me like 10 minutes ago, basically, in an act of either courage or complete stupidity, depending on how this line will go. But I thought that who's, well, I think that you know better than me what, what will be of value. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do need maybe some help extracting that wisdom that you have because you are so used, I mean, to knowing everything, <laughs> doing that for so long. I mean, guys, if you don't know Catherine, uh, she's a best-selling author. She has um, uh, a funnel design course, which I think already has the seven figures in sales. Mm -hmm. She spoke at Funnel Hacking Live. A, a, an event that I hold very dearly because again, I, I'm a complete Russell Brunson junkie. And um, and yeah, she did so much stuff and basically she knows so much, but we also are being limited by only 30 minutes. And, and then there's a question, how do we make those 30 minutes the best that we can do? So basically I came up with a theme. I don't know if you love it, but uh, I'm, I'm going to try it. Yes. Basically what I did is I, I want us again to make those minutes count. So if I were to ask you again, let's say, that, let's imagine a scenario in which all the marketing leaders now disappear. We have no Russell Brunson, no Brenda Bouchard, no Stephen Lawson, no anyone. Yeah. And you're the only one that successfully scaled the business and know what you know now. And you get a rare opportunity to speak to a group of amazing 300 individuals that, by the way, Catherine, are super hungry to, to learn and scale their online business. And they're ready. They are here and they have a complete trust in us uh, to make those minutes count. So the question is, 
they start from scratch. They have this hunger to make an impact on their audience. How would you spend the next 30 minutes knowing that in 30 minutes you're going to disappear and you'll never have any access to them ever again? Okay, first of all, you're cool. This is so fun. Okay, <laughs> I am so in this simulation with you. Okay, timer's on. So the reason why I love this question is because I have lived this question, right? Where it's like, you have these people, varying degrees, probably most of them starting out, right? And they just want to build something. And I also think there's varying degrees, and I've been there too, where at points there's been like, I know exactly what I want to build. And then other points where it's like, I have no idea what I want to build, but there's something inside of me and I'm and like, it has to get out. Or you're just like, oh, I don't know what it is, but I have to do something. And um, and I love this question too, because it's been really interesting with like, with uh, like even with being with you, we've been going on these, um, I've been going on these big press tours. And one of the most interesting thing that comes up is a question similar to this, where people are like, who are, like, where did you come from? Right? Like a few months ago, I didn't, I didn't even know who you were. And now like you're everywhere. Right. And so again, coming back to your question where it's like, how do I build this thing? How do I start from nothing and, and show up? And, um, and so they're like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And, and, uh, and actually the question, the, the answer is actually really interesting and strategic, but I think to, to tell it, I want to like bond with anybody out there. Who's like, I literally am just starting or I'm trying and I'm struggling. I remember back in 2015, there was a movie that came out and it was called joy. Did you ever hear of that movie called joy? I don't think so. Okay. Oh my gosh. You've got to watch it, Daniel. You'll love it. But it's about the woman that invented the self ringing mop. And okay. so it's the story of this like entrepreneur woman back in the 80s, 70s or 80s, I can't remember. And um, this story is just crazy, right? She's just trying to build a mop and it's nuts what she has to go through. Like, um, like somebody tries to steal her patent and um, people like try to undercut her and she sells on QVC and like it totally bombs and then her family totally screws her over. And you're just like, oh my gosh, right? So I'm watching this video, this movie in the movie theater in 2015. And I, um, and at that point, like I had kind of like discovered the entrepreneurial world, but like, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew that I knew, like I was trying, you know, it's just like, I don't know how I'm making money, but I'm trying to make money. It's just like a little bit scattered. And I'm watching this movie and Daniel, I don't realize what's happening, but I go with my family and I like, don't realize that I just like keep scooching up and up more on the edge of my seat while I'm watching this. Like I am so in this movie, right? Because I like feel the struggle of this woman who's just like trying to do something like trying to get out of her something is just like not working so you get to this like climax of the movie where this dude comes and he claims that her invention is his right and and he's like no that, that's mine that's fine and like she's about to lose everything <laughs> in that moment daniel i'm on the edge of my seat I get, I'm not ashamed of this. I'm not proud. Somewhere in between. I'm on the edge of my seat and I don't really, like all of a sudden for whatever reason, I'm so in this story. This woman is me, right? Like I'm so in this story that I lose like all sense of social normalcy and just decency whatsoever. And I yell at the screen. I'm like, I'm in the movie theater with a million people around. I'm like, come on, you can do it. I yell that at the screen. And literally, I'm, that sitting, is awesome. that I'm is sitting next awesome. to my sister. And she literally like takes her hand and like, and she looks at her and she goes, what's wrong with you? I was like, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Like, I, don't know. And I was just like, oh my gosh. I just felt this so deeply because um, uh, I, I, I felt like there was something inside me that needed to get out. That, just, that, that is amazing. I, I love that story. And, and you just saw this movie to me. I, I have to Google it. Obviously. You have to watch it. And I think the thing that's crazy is like, I feel this thing inside me, right? And then fast forward to literally May 2019, like just barely over a year ago. And I still have this like, ugh, like trying to build, like I'm hustling, hustling, hustling thing. I had started CF Design School, um, this online program that I had. And we had about 100 or 200 people in there. And they're actually getting these like amazing results, but like nobody's paying attention to me. Nobody's paying attention to me, right? And I find myself in May 2019, I'm in this business conference and um, I'm like one of 2000 people in this huge room, right? So I'm like in the back, nobody has any idea who I am. And I'm sitting in the back and I'm like watching my main competitor on stage. So like my number one competitor is on stage. I'm in the crowd, right? This is not the situation you want to be in. And this person, and is this person um, is like dropping their product name. And here's the thing, that person deserved to be on the stage. They're amazing. 
They're actually amazing, right? And they have decades of experience on me and millions and millions of more dollars than they've earned for me. And I am sitting there, Daniel, in the back of this room, feeling similar to how I felt in that movie where I'm just like, how, how like I feel something inside me, but how? How am I going to do this? Like how it like I it's at that point on my team, it was me and one contractor from the Philippines that I paid part time. Right. So I'm sitting in the back of this room. I'm running out of money. I'm running out of money. And I'm like looking at this Goliath up on stage and I'm just like, I'm screwed. I'm like, How am I going to do this? Right. Like, how am I going to do this? I'm just like, oh my gosh. And this, and this person on stage just felt like a machine, right? Like they had this huge team and they're backed by a billion dollar company and they've been around for forever and all their systems and processes were good. And then there was lowly little me who nobody knew who I was and I was running out of money and it was me and this girl. And I was just like, oh my God, what am I going to do, right? So I'm actually like, I'm actually, it was this notebook. I'm sitting there with this notebook. And I, and then this thought goes through my head. It was a question. It was just like, how do you beat a machine? How do you beat a machine? How do you beat a machine? What do you do? How do you do that? Right. And, and like, how, like what, how's this going to work? And I'm just like, I have no idea how to beat a machine. I don't know. Right? So I'm sitting in this thing. How do you beat a machine? How do you beat a machine? How do you beat a machine? And then by something that I can only attribute to God, because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think I'm smart enough to come up with this on my own. Right. I'm like, how do you beat a machine? How do you beat a machine? All of a sudden this thought comes to my head where it's like, oh my gosh, you beat a machine with a movement. And I'm like, hmm. And I'm like, I don't exactly know what that means, but it felt smart. So I'm going to write it down, right? So I'm like, okay, you beat a, how do you beat a machine? You beat a machine with a movement. So I'm like, okay, you beat a machine with a movement. What does that mean? What does that mean? And I start to think about all these movements that have happened in history, right? Like in the United States, the civil rights movement, like Martin Luther King, I have a dream, or um, the, the bus boycott with Rosa Parks, or Gandhi with his hunger strike, or everything that happened with the Berlin Wall, right? Like all these movements. And I'm starting to think about all these things in history. And I'm like, what was the common thread? The goal is the common thread of this movement. And what was crazy that all of a sudden I realized that the common thread of this movement was what I was already doing in the sense that see design school with funnels. What I was doing with funnels is I was showing people how to present stories or offers that converted. How do you take what you're doing and put it on a funnel and make sure that people buy? And all of a sudden I was like, wait, with these movements, all they're doing is the same thing. They're figuring out how do you tell a story, present a story in a way that converts in a way that makes people want to change. And I was like, oh my gosh. So all of a sudden I'm like, okay, you beat a machine with a movement. Or how do you beat a machine? You beat a machine with a movement. How do you start a movement? You start a movement by telling stories. So all of a sudden I was like, wait, could I apply what's happening? What we like, cause we crack the code with funnels. Could we apply that to videos and podcasts and stage and Facebook lives and Instagram lives and copy? Like, could we do that? And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe we could. And this is what's nuts, Daniel, okay? What is crazy? So all of a sudden it's like, okay, how do you beat a machine? You beat a machine with a movement. How do you start a movement? You start a movement with stories. So what we start to do in our company is literally design hack or storify everything, right? So all of a sudden our online course wasn't just a course. We added a graduation to the end of it. So all of a sudden people could live a story inside of it. All of a sudden our joint ventures weren't just partnerships. We created a storyline behind it. So they were like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of this. This is cool what you're doing, right? All of a sudden, we created a story arc with reaching out to Russell Brunson. It was no longer like, hey, Russell, listen to me. It was like, oh, like, here's a cool story arc. Like, we're going to make this cool box and we're going to make this cool funnel and we're going to make this part of a huge thing that you want to be a part of my story. I think the most fascinating thing that I learned is that when you know how to present stories that convert, then all of a sudden your stories become their stories. Your stories become your customer stories. And when your stories become their stories, then your solutions become their solutions. And all of a sudden, they don't, they don't care about the person on the stage. They don't care about them because they're like, that person might be smart, but they don't know me. Their story isn't my story. So I'm not, I'm not going to go to them. They're great, but I'm not going to go to them because they don't get me. Only Daniel gets me. He's the only one that gets me. His story is my story or Catherine's story is my story. So, of course, I'm going to buy from Catherine, even though somebody else is standing on stage because she gets me. She understands me. And all of a sudden... We start to like, like storefy everything, design hack everything. We start to crack the code on what does this look like to do this with video? What does this look like to do this with JV? What does this look like when you're reaching out to these huge named people? And again, the most fascinating thing that happened is within a span of six months. And it, again, it's almost annoying, right? Like I, it's almost annoying, like, cause you're like, I've been struggling with this for five years, right? You're like, oh, it was that easy. <laughs> like, are you 
kidding me? Also, we learned that like the lever, right? The lever to go from a nobody to the number one go-to expert in your niche. The lever to go from nobody following you to having a seven figure movement was simply design hacking. Knowing how to present stories that convert so that people all of a sudden your stories become their stories and your solutions become their solutions. And I think, um, again, one of the most fun things is when you're number one in your niche, there's a lot of fun things that happen. Number one, you get paid like number one, which let me just say, it's just a much happier life. Like not like being paid six figures for a funnel versus 500 bucks. Just what it's just more fun. Then I'm just going to be honest about that. Right. Number two is your competitors just become irrelevant. It's like, again, we don't care about the, we don't care about the person on the stage because they don't, they don't get us. Right. And then the third thing, I think this is most exciting is all of a sudden when you know how to present stories that convert and, 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 uh, and give people this, this option to become a part of it, then you don't just have a tribe of followers, right. That like, like, or comment, you have a tribe of evangelistic followers, like an evangelist. Like if you think of like, is like sometimes like the Bible, right? Like a preacher, right? Like they're not just like, oh, cool story. They're like, they share your stuff. Cause it's like, oh my gosh, like Daniel, like Daniel's words are my words. Like this dude gets me. Like he's saying my story. So I have to share his video. I have to share his life. Like he, he found the words that I haven't been able to find. Right. And so, um, and so I think that literally is what like makes it so exciting. So you go back and you're like, Hey, people have 30 minutes until the world ends, right? I'm going to disappear forever. Everybody has no idea how to get going. What's going to happen? How do you actually make a, how do you actually start a business that's going to do something? How do you actually do it? The question is, is you have to take down the machines. You have to start a movement and to start a movement. You have to know how to present stories that convert. I think one of the most, the, the two biggest consequences that come from that, that are amazing is number one, like the, um, I don't know, like, I don't know if you can relate with this, but like where you're just like this thing inside of you, you got to get it out. You're like, I don't know why I have to build. Like, it's like, why, why are you reading dot com secrets on your free time? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're a weirdo. Who's, who's reading internet marketing books in their spare time? Listen, you're one of us. We're the weirdos, Daniel. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's something in us. And I think that's one of those beautiful things is that starts to come out. Or all of a sudden it's not, you're not trapped inside. It's all of a sudden it's fun. You know how to build off of it. And the second thing, which is so cool, which is so fun, is when you know how to present stories that convert. And this is really the key for making a business explode, is that when you know how to present stories that convert and your stories become their stories and your solutions become their solutions, all of a sudden, you're not the only one trying to make this thing go. You're not the only one putting energy into your business, putting energy into this brand, because even if you leave because your story is their story, people still perpetuate it. They still share it. And, um, and I think that's been one of the most fun things for what we've been able to do for us and our clients is there are more people than just you that care about what you're doing. And it's just like, Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Like you could remove yourself and it's still going to live beyond. And so, um, again, like taking your products and your services and your message out into the world by presenting stories in a way that convert. Oh my gosh. Like that is actually the key to make it happen. And again, I think the most fun thing is that it's actually pretty annoyingly simple. There's, there's a formula to it. It feels like that should be hard. Like storytelling is this like really soft skill. Again, I I love it. it's not, I, it's very formulaic. I really love it. Uh, I think that you have a unique approach and I'm also, I'm, I'm very surprised actually by this interview because here you are, someone who is an expert when it comes to funnel design, which I think when most people hear about this subject, the, the first thing that pops to mind is technical, tech graphics, all of those kind of things that might repel a lot of people. But here you are talking to me more about the strategies, more about actually the art of copywriting, the art of storytelling, which I think is a, a fascinating matter. Um, and, and I just love that. I think it's a unique approach. I think that um, this is just so much more in depth because there's so much more than to know computers or to know graphics or to know, you know, what kind of uh, design will go best or what kind of color for in size or even, I don't know, uh, a special effect on that button. I, I think that is super cool. And I also think that a lot of what you shared is actually like a re very strategically, very like long term kind of game, which I think also a lot of people here are. Uh, well, I'm super glad, guys, that you can uh, hear about that, because I think a lot of people, when they first start out, they just think about letting this out. They think about the short term kind of goal but you are actually thinking like 10 steps in advance about what will, what will become of it when I leave? 
yeah. uh, who will continue this journey? Am I building a movement or am I just making sales? Uh, so this is really uh, uh, an approach that I really like. Uh, and obviously the, the stuff that you mentioned about making the, that people you know, resonate with you because if they don't resonate with you, they'll just make excuses for why you are where you are uh, about you having some unique talents, unique abilities. Well, this is just Catherine Jones. Catherine Jones has an eye for final designs. But no, actually, when you're telling a story, when you can make people resonate, now the solution that you present, just like you said, become their solution because they imagine them as yourself. First, uh, first saw them in 2015, I think you mentioned. Yeah. So they did in themselves. I, I think it's incredible. I really like it. And I, and I think, thank you. And I think one of the cool things as well is when you can present stories that convert, depending on, on who you're trying to reach or what you're trying to do, like, it doesn't have to be a respecter of persons, right? Like, I mean, we have people in our community within the last week, we've had a 60 year old make money with our stuff. And we literally have had a 10 year old make money with our stuff. Like a 10 year old straight up took like resonated with what CF design school was teaching because we turned it into a story. Right. And she was like, wait, I want to make money from home. I want to do that. I can do that. Literally takes our course within a week and a half, two weeks, right? Within two weeks, books a $1,500 client on a Thursday. On Saturday, goes out and buys a $1,200 puppy. It's like, that is so cool. But the, the, the it's like, why, why did she buy so in a 10 year old? Why did she buy so in? And at the same simultaneous time, you have a 63 year old man who's buying in. It's, and it's the same product. It's the same movement, but it's all about, can you tell a story, right? Can you let, can you allow people to become a part of what it is that you're doing in a way that's really, really cool. And again, like this, this concept you talked about where it's like big picture, long game, more strategy. It's so true. But I think the fun part is I think people have been approaching this incorrectly, not incorrectly. I just think inefficiently, whereas there really is a very formulaic approach because this feels hard. If you hear like storytelling, copywriting, messaging, positioning, it's like, nah, it's hard. Ah, ugh. You know, it's like, what's your customer avatar? It's like, I think I'm busy. I can't do that. That's too hard, right? But no, I think people have been approaching it an inefficient way. There truly are formulas and systems to get so clear. The reason why CF Design School is so successful is because it's formulaic. Like how, like design is a science. It's not an art. It's the same thing here, right? Storytelling, design hacking, presenting stories that convert, it is a science, not an art. And um, anyway, so like going back to these press tours, everybody's like, and like even you, right? Like, how do you do this? What do you do? I like went back to my team and um, because they're so awesome. They listen to them and they're like, Catherine, like, I think we should do something with this. Like people keep asking, like, like we should turn into a coaching program or like high consulting or like you could charge so much money for this, like blah, blah, blah. So I'm listening, I'm listening. And all of a sudden I'm like, guys, we can't do it. We can't, we can't do it. We can't turn it into a coaching program. And, and they're like, what do you mean we can't turn it into a coaching program? I'm like, we can't do it. And they're like, no, but like, think of the numbers. And like, think of what you could do and blah, blah. And I was like, guys, listen, I, 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 I can't charge for this. And they're like, I'm sorry, what? And they're like, are you, did you lose your mind? Like, what do you mean you can't charge for this? I'm like, listen, I can't charge for this because I, I wish that somebody would have told baby Catherine in 2015, screaming at the movie theater screen this. And if somebody would have told me, cause the tweaks are so simple. If somebody would have told me this in 2015, it would have changed the trajectory of my life and my business forever. But I couldn't have afforded it in 2015, right? I couldn't have done it. And I was like, guys, for baby Catherine, I can't do it. I think that's number one. And number two, they were like, but come on, like, go be fine. Like, you get other people. And I was like, and here's the other thing, guys. The most beautiful thing about design hacking, about knowing how to present stories that convert. And we see this with our agency clients all the time. It's, it's like, it's crazy to me. You have like these genius people and they come, they're like, like, they're like nobody's buying my stuff or nobody knows who I am. And they're true. They're these amazing people, this amazing service or product. And they cannot get people to pay attention to them. And it's not because they're dumb. It's not because their product's bad. They just don't know how to present their stuff in a way that converts. And I was like, not only do we have to do this for free for baby Catherine, but we have to do this for all of the people that are sitting on gold. Like there are too, there's too much goodness to get out into the world. 
for us to not just say like, please, right? Like we're going to be 2020. We need the goodness in the world. Are you kidding me? It's like, we, like, we, there are too many good people and good causes and good products and movements that need to be born, but all people are lacking. And this is crazy to me. All people are lacking is strategy. Just a little bit of tactics, a little bit of strategy. So again, much to much to the disagreement of my team who have they've come around, right? But I'm like, listen, guys, we're doing it for free. <laughs> like, we're gonna tell everybody everything for free because fun. So um on, honestly, if you guys want to come, we're doing this free five-day workshop. So again, giving you a little bit of a taste here of what's possible. Five-day workshop, day one, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into like what did it look like for us to do this? We started something called Operation Hashtag Smoke Em Out where we just decided to be so strategically loud with our stories that people wouldn't even know that our competitors existed. We're going to go into like the details of what that looks like. Day two, we're going to go all into the mud of like, okay, cool. So what does that actually look like to do that in a video? What does that actually look like to do that in copy? Or like, let's say that I sell high tickets. Should I do something different? Like actually get into the mud and the dirt of what that looks like. Then day three, what we're going to do is when you know how to present stories that convert outward, you can also do the same thing to your mind. You can also start to tell stories to yourself in a way that you start to believe them. So all of a sudden you're like self-affirmations aren't like dumb self-affirmations. You stop shooting yourself in the foot and you actually believe that you deserve to be number one. Then the, on day four, all of a sudden you're going to have like started creating content, starting creating this beast. And listen, we got to build you up. We're going to, I'm going to show you automations and systems because like, listen, you created a monster, right? So I'm going to show you how to systemize it so you don't drown. Then day five, and this is what I get like so excited about, is once you start to have a semblance of a movement, I'm going to show you my secrets for reaching out to big, high name VIP people to get VIP access to them and invite them like a Steve Larson or Myron Golden or a Russell Brunson to become part of your story. Like, what does it look like to actually do that? How do you actually do that? So that's what we're going over in the five days. It starts um, a week from today on Monday. And um, and again, it's all free, much to the dismay of my team, but all right, that's what we're doing, okay? And so if you guys want to come hang out with us, it's just, you just need to register just because um, we're going to like send you a bunch of free fun stuff on the back end too. Um, but it's just at design hacking. So HTTPS designhacking.com forward slash workshop. Um, and yeah, if you want to design hacking again, designhacking.com forward slash workshop. Yeah. HTTPS. Okay. So, so, uh, so if you guys want to come hang out, honestly, if you're interested in becoming number one, go to in your niche. If you're interested in starting a seven figure movement, interested in getting paid like number one, competitors becoming irrelevant, tribe of evangelistic followers, come on down. Price is right, which is zero. Come on down. Price is right. <laughs> I'll, um, we'll, we'll give you all the details next week.